Today, we're working on this 2015 Chevy Tahoe LT. Uh, this truck is powered by an L83 engine, which is a Gen 5 V8 from GM. And these engines are known for a couple of different failures. They're known for fuel injector failures, and they're also known for uh, lifter failures. The, uh, these engines come with AFM, or active fuel management, which is uh, a continuation of displacement on demand. And it is it consists of electronic lifters on four of the cylinders that can shut down compression to uh, supposed to be to get better gas mileage and to reduce emissions. The uh, actual end result of them is you get about a 15% increase in fuel efficiency, which is negligible. And for the emissions that they're supposed to help with, what the industry has been learning from these is that when the cylinder transitions from a positive pressure to a negative pressure, it draws in crankcase vapors. And so it doesn't really help all that much with emissions either. But what it does do is it knocks the reliability out of your engine. This Tahoe has 70,000 miles on the odometer and it has an engine failure. Uh, that's, that's a terrible run for a GM V8 engine, especially, uh, I, that's just a terrible run. So the best thing that anybody can do with their uh, LT or LS based engine is remove and just get rid of the collapsible lifters and install a set of normal lifters so that you can go back to the reliability of the Gen 3 engines which were widely regarded as going hundreds of thousands of miles without a failure and uh, the the gas mileage that you lose is less than 15 percent it's negligible and it doesn't always run in four or six cylinder mode so you don't it's not 15 percent across the board it's 15 percent under very specific conditions so Overall, it's less than 15%. Um, let me show you guys what failed. So first off, we can see the discoloration just on the on cylinder one rockers for both intake and exhaust valves. This discoloration is not is only on these two. It's not on the rest. Uh, the first one is the exhaust valve, and this is the intake valve. See that? The, the rocker is off its lobe, so we can move it a little bit, but it's still pretty tight. This is the intake valve. See that play and that slot? It's actually gotten a lot better. When I first took it down, this thing was all over the place. The, uh, the lifter must have uh, come back up a little bit. But that amount of play is uh, unmistakable. Uh, the customer states they were riding around and uh, they heard a pop and then the, the truck started running real bad. And uh, upon taking delivery, the customer said that uh, they took the truck to another mechanic who diagnosed a cylinder as having no compression. When we took the truck in, we uh, we connected our, our scan tool to it and we saw we looked at the misfire monitors and we saw the cylinder one was just steadily counting misfires uh, like it was a dead hole. We pull the spark plug out and it's covered in oil. We take the valve covers off and we see that this rocker is incredibly loose. Not like this. This is actually a lot better. It was really bad like you could fit your finger in between the rocker and the, uh, the valve spring. The truck is sat overnight and I guess from the time we started it and had it running the uh, the lifter has come back a little bit but uh, in this moment we need to get the heads off and we need to understand if the camshaft was hurt or if we're just faced with uh, with lifters um, also on L83 or on Gen 5 motors getting the uh, fuel injectors out is a thing because the fuel injectors sit in the combustion chamber the tips of them get loaded up with carbon and it makes it hard to, to pull out the fuel rails. So we got a little struggle to get the rails out and we got to get the heads off and uh, understand if we're just changing uh, lifters or if we need to change the cam as well.